The ID Cooling SE914XT ARGB Budget CPU Cooler. This is the cooler we're going to be doing the overview and unboxing for today. We're going to take it out of the box, go down through the specs. I don't like calling these things reviews because to have a fair review, I believe you need to have the product for a while and use it on a day to day basis to give a fair opinion on it. This is just to run down through the specs, show you what all comes in the box, and tell you what I think about it on the first glance. There will be timestamps in the description below. If there's a certain part of the video you'd like to jump to, you're more than welcome to do so. Some other links down there that may interest you, and don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff when you way down that description box. So without wasting a lot of your time, let's take this thing out of the box and see if it may be right for your next gaming PC build here in 2022. Like I said, we're going to be taking it out of the box today, and we'll be running down through the specs as we take the components out of the box. So let's get into it. We'll get this thing out of the box here and give you my first impressions of it when I get it out of the box. Maybe we will. There we go. We are greeted with a how to connect and control. And then you have an installation guide. And if you're interested in the sockets that this thing will support. Alright guys, since we've got the instruction guide here up for the mounting. This does support LGA, which is Intel 2066 2011. 1200, 1151, 1150, 1155, and 1156. For AMD, it says the only thing it supports is AM4. So that is the socket types that it will support. All right, then we got a little bit of protective foam here. Um, pull it up out, there's your box goodies or your hardware for the mounting we'll get into that here in a little bit we'll set that to the side okay then we got the air cooler with the fan attached to it and some protective foam and the box is pretty well empty besides a little packet of silicone so we'll put the box to the side All right, get the foam off over here. This is a little bit smaller than what I'm used to dealing with. All right, guys. I guess the first thing we'll do is take the fan off the side of it here. And we'll take a look at the fan. And it just comes off with these two little clips like most of these type of coolers got. All right, guys. This, this does come with a 92 millimeter ARGB fan. It seems pretty sturdy. You got a few little rubber pads here on the back to stop the vibration when it's against the heat sink. It is set up in a pull configuration where the fan will pull air in, then push it through the heat sink, which is pretty common setup for these. We do have a four pin PMW fan header there. We do have a, your standard five volt ARGB header, which is a three pin layout. I think it feels pretty sturdy, not too bad. They say this thing will do up to 150 watt TDP. Like I said, it is a 92 millimeter fan with 25 millimeter thick, which is your typical fan size. The fan itself does have a hydraulic bearing. Uh, max airflow of it is 45.8 CFMs. Fan speed is 600 to 2200 RPM, plus or minus 10%. So, sounds like the fan will go up to about 2400 RPM if need be. Uh, noise max level on this is from 14 to 25.8 dBA. So, it should be pretty quiet actually. Um, most households is about 40 dBA. So, it should stay pretty quiet even if it hits the max 100% on, on the fan. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty typical little, little cheaper fan, I guess. Not bad for a little 92 millimeter. Going over to the heat sink here, you do have an ARGB cable coming off the heat sink, which is just going to be your standard three pin ARGB header for the five volt, because you do have our ARGB lighting here on this top plate. And it looks like you may have some ARGB coming around the sides of it, on all four sides of it. The overall dimensions of it is 103.7 by 95 by 133 millimeters. So you got 103.7 this way. You have 95 millimeters this way. And the total height, which makes this pretty pretty good little cooler for a mini ITX build or something like that. It's only 100 and 
131 millimeters tall. So like I said, that does make for a pretty good, pretty good little cooler for a smaller form factor build for you, if, if that's what you're looking for. Um, I'm gonna say it's oxidized coating on it, on the heat pipes and on the fins itself. It does have four six millimeter heat pipes. Uh, we'll pull this back where you can see. So you got aluminum base there. Then you have your four heat pipes, copper heat pipes coming through. Um, the springs on the screw. You do have springs on the screw, so it is going to be tension. So it ain't going to let you over over tighten, which is pretty nice. Overall feel of it's actually pretty stable, pretty sturdy. Um, it does have things going down the side over here on both sides to help keep your fins in the position where they're supposed to be. Which is going to be pretty common. I don't know if you guys can see down through it, but it is pretty pretty condensed fins. The fins don't look real thick on it. I really don't see no other information about it besides the fins are aluminum. I really don't know what the measurement of the fins is, and I don't have nothing small enough to measure that thinness. It seems to be pretty pretty stable, little heat sink. Like I said, you know, as, as small as it is, it is fairly small. That's good for your small form factor builds. Uh, looking at the pictures of it, you do have ARGB that comes out of the bottom here, the top plate. Plus, your, anything white on the top of it will also light up in ARGB. That will be a pretty cool looking little cooler once we get it installed and get the temperature testing done on it. But it seems like it holds up pretty good. A lot sturdier than a lot of the 120s, which this may it may be because of the size of it that may you know make it make it feel more sturdier than than the other ones. And like I said, it does have an ARGB header to it. Now let's see what all comes in the box of goodies for you here. Get the box opened up. The hardware mounting kit for it. Okay. Dump it all out there, and the box is empty. All right, guys, and here's the box of goodies here. The hardware mounting kit. Uh, it looks like we do have some spacers here, and some different screws, and some different thumb nuts. Better to mount with. They do give you an ARGB splitter cable here, it looks like. It's your standard ARGB headers. That's your three pin there. And then these here feed off. Connect up the rest of the ARGBs. So with this one cable that they give you, you take one ARGB header and split it off onto four different devices. So you can use the two for the CPU cooler and it also gives you two extra ones, which is kind of cool. The hooks, they do have a controller here for your ARGB if you don't want to run off your motherboard ARGB. It runs off of SATA power. And it's just got your common three pin ARGB header on it, of course, because it matches up with everything else in the cooler. That's kind of nice, which I figure most people would be running your ARGB off the motherboard. It's kind of nice that you add that little controller box in there for you. This little baggie here, looks like we got some more standoffs. None of the bags is listed, so you definitely want to keep all your instruction manual to figure out what standoffs you need for which, for which, uh, for what you're mounting to. They do give you an extra set of fan clips. I guess if you want to put a, another 92 millimeter fan on the other side of the push pull configuration. Okay, then you do have a back plate here. This is only used if you're going to be putting it on an Intel system. If you're putting it on AMD system, this, this cooler, like most coolers, they do use the built-in back plate for AMD. Uh, they do give you a bit of thermal compound because you do have to put your own thermal compound on it to be able to keep the C to be able to keep your CPU cool and of course they give you a little badge there I guess that's kind of their logo I guess I'd take it it's, uh, it's also in the middle of the fan I think it's that's their logo you know it's a go faster badge you know make you put that on there makes your system go faster and here's your brackets in this bag that's going to connect to the heat sink itself all right guys and for this kit they give you two different brackets one's for intel and one's for amd unlike most of them most of them the c looking brackets is for intel but with this cooler they're actually the opposite the c looking brackets is for am4 platform mounting on am4 and these straighter ones actually by looking at the instruction guide says them's for the intel which kind of makes sense i guess because if you look close to them here they do have notches at the end of these straight ones for different Intel sockets. This one here's only got one hole in the end of them. 
which would be for AM4 mounting. All right, guys, that's pretty well the unboxing of it. I think uh, there ain't a whole lot of information about about this there ain't a whole lot of details on what the cooler is made of there ain't a whole lot of information on the fan or whatnot but that is about the best that i could come up with as far as the information on the fan and the heat sink and uh components to come up with it which uh there will be another video on the channel coming up with the install and the testing of it make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button if you want to see it when it comes live but uh, let me get reset up here and i'll come up with the conclusions of the video for you and let you know what i think of this little cooler we took it out of the box to show you what all comes with it, which is pretty common. Little tire star cooler. It is a little bit smaller than what I'm used to dealing with. There's only a 92 millimeter fan on this. But I think it's ideal and I think it's aimed towards the mini ITX builds. It may look a little awkward in a full size case or a mid tire case. I think this thing is really aimed towards the smaller builds though. As far as the durability of it and whatnot, you know, you'd have to use it for a while to see. It does seem to be pretty well built, as it is pretty sturdy. That may have to do with the size of it because it is so compact. But I don't think you can go wrong with the day of the filming. It goes about $37. I'll have links in the description below if you'd like to pick one of these up or check it out. The true test on the performance of this will come in a later video. We will be installing on an AM4 socket. We will be doing temperature testing get some other CPU coolers in this price point. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell if you want to be notified when that video drops. And while you're down there in that description box, there may be some other links down there that may interest you. Don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way out of here. You all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or a live stream.